Okay, last piece of the puzzle. Okay. Um, these are ideas. They're not necessarily um, always useful or usable, but these are ideas. For example, before lunch, we were making arrangements with the driver who will be getting us out to and then bringing us back from Korup National Park. And very simply, we probably won't have much ability to communicate with him while we're out there. So he knows that he picks us up here at quarter till six in the morning on Sunday, and that he drops us in Mundemba, and that he then picks us up at noon on March 15th in Mundemba and takes us to our next destinations. And so I don't have much flexibility, okay? But one of the questions earlier was, so when my curve is flat, or now you know when my C is one, can I stop? Right, do I have to stay here all week? if I'm done after three days? Or do I have to stay here two months if I'm done after two weeks? So again, sometimes you just can't do this. But sometimes you can. And these ideas apply, you know, in the, in the coarsest sense, they might apply to, um, you know, can I move from Corrup to Rumpy Hills? And that's pretty hard because you need a car and driver and all that. But maybe, um, maybe the Herpers decide, sorry, I pick on you guys a lot. Maybe they decide, okay, we're gonna do the uh, leaf litter sampling intensively until we're done. And we're gonna put all of our effort into that. And when we finish with the leaf litter, then we're gonna set pitfall traps, okay? And so that's something that doesn't really require a car and a driver and logistical arrangements. It's just, when do we switch activities? Or it could be, we're gonna sample that highland forest up there until we're done, and then we're gonna go do the forest along the stream. Whatever. This is just an idea. It's kind of the next step in thinking about inventory completeness. And it came out of a lot of thinking about the fact that field work is expensive. Okay? It's expensive in terms of money. It's expensive in terms of time. It's expensive in terms of wear and tear on your body. Uh, it's certainly uh, expensive in terms of relationship with your family. You know, I am continually, continually, we say in the doghouse because I was gone a month and then I was gone another month and my wife is saying, can't you spend some time around the house? So this, and I'm sure every one of you has heard that from a wife, a mother, or a husband, whatever. Um, so if, ex if field work is so costly, we ought to use our time in the field in the most efficient manner possible. So that's the idea behind this. So um, just a few kind of introductory remarks. Um, usually the gaps in what we know are gaps because they're hard to get to. This is making the point that it's expensive, difficult, time consuming, even dangerous. And so we really need to optimize our use of our time. And very specifically, we should maximize the information that we gain you know, per unit time, per day, per month, per whatever. But we should maximize the information that we gain per unit time in the field. Now, if you think about what you do when you're out in the field, Almost invariably, what you do is measured in terms of effort. So we're gonna get 
10 mist nets up. Uh, that's effort. We're going to stay at that site seven days. That's effort. We're going to uh, accumulate 500 trap nights. Whatever. My point is that usually we plan our, uh, our sampling or inventorying by effort. Okay? And so in, in essentially all cases, the decisions about when to stop sampling are decisions based on accumulation of effort. So I'm going to argue to you that that's a very bad idea. Okay? So let's imagine doing an inventory. And I've included a picture. Okay? It's a very pleasant place. Okay? <laughs> you can walk down this trail. You can walk in any direction. There's no underbrush. There's probably no fauna or flora either. Um, but that would be a place that I would take my family for a picnic. Right? Easy, pleasant, visible, accessible, and probably pretty easy to survey. So I say, I'm going to go out and I'm going to spend five days, maybe that's five days, surveying that site. Right? And notice that on the first day out, I accumulate a whole bunch of species. I get almost all the way there. Second day, I get a few more, third, a few more, by the fifth day, I'm almost done. Okay? But now let's add in something that's maybe not so nice. Right? I mean, it's nice in terms of the flora or fauna that it'll hold, but I certainly wouldn't take my family there for a picnic. And so if we add in that second site and look at its accumulation, I can't walk through it. I can't see in it, it's full of bugs, it's, no, it's not pleasant, and so maybe my accumulation curve goes much more slowly, right? This one is so easy to survey, and this one is so unpleasant, I'm spending all my time pushing through the vegetation instead of watching for birds. But notice that if we use an effort-based cutoff, Sorry, that's its real, sorry, I got out of order. If this inventory were continued for a long time, the easy one, we eventually get to this number of species. And if this inventory were continued for a long time, we get that number of species. Okay? But, if we stop with an effort-based cutoff, notice what happens. Here we stop with this number of species, and here we stop with this number of species. So notice that with effort, we are essentially stopping when one inventory is almost done, and the other inventory is just getting started. Okay? Now the other effort-based cutoff that we could do is this one. So instead of staying five days, we stay 30 days. And in that case, yeah, this inventory is probably done. But what have we done here in this site? We were almost done at five days, and we stayed 25 more. We've wasted our time. Okay? In all that time, maybe we accumulated a couple more species. But by staying this amount of effort, this long, we wasted all of that time. And probably better would have been to take those 20 days and invest them in the other site. So here's the idea of re results-based sampling. It's the idea of adjusting the amount of effort expended at a site or a subsite depending on the quality and completeness of the results obtained, not depending on some effort criterion. So essentially, you continue your sampling until you achieve some level of completeness. So we could say, I want to be 95% done. 
I want to have detected 95 out of every 100 species in that place. Now, you remember that these real life inventories sometimes have little sills and then they jump up again. And then, so you might add some other criterion to make sure. And so I usually add something like a number of days without adding species to the inventory or something like that. And all of those criteria are flexible. In some cases you might want it to be 90%. In some cases you might want it to be 100%. In some cases you might want to eliminate the days without adding species. And in some cases you might want to make it 10 days or 50 days. Okay? It depends on what you want out of your inventory. So. To be able to do this, you have to be able to make on-the-fly decisions about your progress, about the quality of your results. And I'm perfectly conscious of the fact that it may be impossible. Okay, it may be very, very difficult to call the driver and say, uh, you know what, we don't want you here Sunday, could you please come the following Saturday? And the driver is like, hey, I put that on my calendar. Right? So it sometimes doesn't work. But we could certainly use it within a site and prioritizing different activities or sampling in different areas. So here's the idea. There's our true species richness. And we do our, our inventory and we accumulate these records through time. Okay, so just like we looked at the first part of the morning. And what you can see is first day, second day, third day, we're adding tons of species. Starts to level off by the fourth day. And then from there on, fifth day, we still get a few new species. Sixth day, we get a few new species. Seventh and eighth days, nothing new. Okay? So the idea is as we progress through the inventory, at least by the second day, we start estimating our species richness. You guys know how to do this, right? The Chow estimator. So first day, we get this estimate here. This is the expected, this is the estimate, and this is the observed. So we're not doing very well yet. But by here or here, we're doing better and better. So let's look at this. There is, there are our completeness indices, okay? I made all of this up, so it might not be exactly right. But this divided by this gave me, in my imagination, 0.14. This divided by this gave me 0.4. This is calculating C. Everybody with me? 0 0.7, 0 0.9, 0 0.96, 0.99, 1. Which is to say out here, every species has been seen twice or more. So then, and obviously before we do this, we have to think about some stopping rules. And again, this appeals back to what do you want out of your inventory? And what are the constraints on your time and resources? But it basically will include some level of inventory completeness, and then maybe some secondary degree of stability. 